Hey everybody, Rodham here. Thanks for tuning in to episode 15 of a very special Kerbal Space Program because now it includes Breaking Ground. So this episode, I am going to go over all of the new mechanics that Breaking Ground, the new Kerbal Space Program DLC, adds. So uh, in the research and development, uh, you will see uh, strewn about the tech tree now will be things like the experimental control station or... Um, the light scanning arm and other uh, new breaking ground components like that. So for me to be able to demonstrate what breaking ground adds, let me first go into the space plane uh, manufacturing, uh, which I haven't really been this series so far because I haven't done a lot of um, aeronautics research. And we're going to go and add a command pod here, just like that. Let's rotate it a little bit. Really, really ugly uh, little rover I'm going to make here. So, in fact, I'm going to call this a RHD Ugly Rover. Uh, because I'm just building a rover to demonstrate the new components of this, uh, this DLC. So, what this adds primarily is cargo and robotics. So, in cargo, if we go into the cargo, uh, you'll see things called container module and cargo storage and I'm gonna add some of these cargo storage units what these do is these um, store science deployables so I'm gonna add in a experimental control station which every single deployable cluster will need I'm also going to add photovoltaic panel and I'm going to add let's do goo I'm also gonna add weather and more photovoltaic panels. So all in all, we'll have one of these experimental control stations. This will need one power to operate. Um, I will have a goo, which will require one power to operate, and weather station, which will require one power to operate. And the power that I'm gonna generate is uh, from photovoltaic panel one, two, and three. All right, so this is the start of my really ugly rover. Just to demonstrate, these new deployable science objects. Uh, next up, I am going to put in little hydraulic, these are new parts, a new hydraulic arms here. Uh, what these, these hydraulic uh, cylinders do is they extend and retract, uh, and I can use those for a wider wheelbase. Uh, then additionally, let's go ahead and add in a one on top here. Uh, let's do it like the telescoping telescoping ones because those are pretty cool and then on top here I'm gonna put a little servo and then I'll add a hinge I'll add another telescoping and I'll demonstrate why I'm doing this in a second so let's angle this down and Then we'll put a scanning arm. Now I don't have anything to scan yet, but I'll just demonstrate what a scanning arm does. And let's uh, angle this so it doesn't collide with anything. So I'm gonna change the angle limit to 80 degrees so that this thing can't actually embed itself in the command pod. So what these do, these telescoping arms allow me to raise it or lower it. And this one, same deal, extend it or retract it the hinge here changes the angle that it's at, as you can see. And then the servo uh, allows me to, to rotate it around the probe, the little rover here. It's not a rover yet, but will be a rover. Um, and that way, I'll have um, a very wide field that I can scan. So if you click on the preview scan, as you can see, this is the operating space that a scan can take here. Uh, in fact, what I might end up doing is, let's go ahead and go back to robotics and stick another little hinge here. And that way we can angle this downwards if we so choose. We can even add another telescope arm and angle this down. And that will allow me to have a huge range of 
uh, motion. So I'm going to change this to allow all angles. And we'll just have to be careful to control this and not embed it into our own ship. Uh, so this will allow for a huge range of control. Uh, which is very, very cool. It's not, because it's very long, it's not going to be all that stable. Uh, keep that in mind. Okay. Next up, let's just uh, finish up the rover. So I'm going to add micro nodes and uh, let's do with little teeny struts here. Oh, that's upside down. Oh, that's because I, I started this off with a command pod. That is the problem there. And then it, uh, this mod also adds in some new wheels. I haven't unlocked every part. Keep that in mind. There are some parts that are uh, missing here. Because I don't have a fully unlocked tech tree. So there's a lot of deployable experiments. And um, robotic parts that I don't have. And some rover parts. Uh, so there we go. Got my ugly rover all set up. Uh, let's add in some action groups and a pilot. So the pilot is going to be Tanfred. It doesn't really matter who it is. And my custom action groups. Uh, for action group number one, I'm going to extend these pistons. And for custom group number two, I'm going to retract these pistons. See if that works. It might not. Um... Save this, and I don't have any power generation here. It's a temporary little um, it's a temporary little uh, probe, so I don't need it to last for centuries or whatever, but I will add some power to it. Uh, let's do a custom action group of custom group of nine to extend these solar power, power panels. Okay, save and launch. So now I'm just gonna demonstrate setting up a little science station. A temporary little science station. I don't have anything to scan with the scanner arm, uh, but once I'm offered a mission to use the scanner arm, I will do a mission that involves using the scanner arm. All right, so as you can see, I did warn you that this really long arm is wobbly. But here we go. Uh, I will need to invert steering uh, on one side because I started this off with the uh, the command pod, which is obviously not ideal. Control from here. Oh, all right. Let's invert it back. Oh, this is all sorts of messed up. There we go. Now it's actually controllable. That's very cool. All right, so I'm just driving away from the runway so that I can set up my, um, my little rover to build something. And I didn't even symmetrically put on the rear wheel. This is a really ugly rover. I'm going to hit number 9 to deploy my solar power panels, even though it's nighttime and there's no sun to be had. And then I will extend the top of my little scanning gantry uh, to get out of the way of the solar power panels. Okay, so let's slam on the brakes. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate a servo. This rotates this around. Obviously, this is tall and wobbly and not all that stable but if I had really anything to scientifically research around my uh, ship here uh, I could get to it as you can see I have a huge range of motion oh I actually broke the scanner because I moved it too quickly and it's too unstable but yeah I'm just demonstrating um, using the arms and using the servos and I could also use the hinges here 
Uh, again, you got to be careful because things can collide badly. So let's see if I can cause that to break off some of the... Nope, I'm just outside of the range of the solar power panels here. But yeah, you do have to be careful. Okay, so I've shown you that. Now I'm going to show you the deployable experiments because I don't have anything to scan. So let's go and grab the uh, experimental control and pop that into my backpack here and walk this out and click this little icon to deploy it. And the experimental control needs power. So let's run back over and grab one of these solar power panels. And the experimental control allows you to use solar power panels. It also allows you to transfer science projects short distances because there's a teeny little antenna built in. Uh, I'm going to accelerate time until it's daytime so my solar power panels function. Eventually you can get um, radioactive powered uh, generation for deployables, but for right now I don't have that. So as you can see, total power needed, one, power available, two. Uh, so this experimental control is working. So let's give the experimental control an experiment to control. Uh, so let's get this little goo container and deploy this goo container. So what this does is much like the goo units that you can have uh, once this deploys, it just observes the goo over time and transfers that information to the experiment control. So as you can see, experiments connected, one. Power needed, power available, two for two. So this is generating 0 .004 science per hour. Not a whole lot, uh, but that's partially because I'm set on Kerbin, which um, uh, isn't worth a whole lot of science. I'm also gonna deploy some additional solar power panels. It's nice to have more solar power panels than you need because you can risk browning out, which means if you don't have enough power to run your experiments, nothing runs. It's not that some of it runs, literally everything will stop working when you brown out. And then I'm gonna deploy one more science project, which is a weather analysis, kind of like a barometer. And this also generates a little bit of science over time of 0.0. 0.0045 per hour and this is 0.0042 per hour and as long as there's sun in the sky and these photovoltaic panels do track the sun on their own uh, I will be generating a teeny teeny little bit of power or uh, science over time and once that experiment has run its course I can then transfer that experiment um, from the monitors here the analyzer monitors to the experimental control. This experimental control has a small comms built in and then transfer that, all that experimental data here back to Kerbin or back to Kerbal Space Center, I should say. And that's more or less how the deployables work, which I think are very, very cool. Um, now my stupid little rover, I'm just gonna recover because I wasn't planning on using it. And I now have weather basically a teeny little weather station and goo observation station right next to Kerbal Space Center. And that will run uh, during daytime hours constantly, which is, if you ask me, very, very cool. And you will get missions to, um, to run experiments like that. Uh, if you want to run during the nighttime too, you would need to get um, this research here, which sets up radio isotope thermal generators as a deployable, um, you know, which, you know, is a bit deeper into the research tree than I have. So before I continue on next mission, let me try to pick up some new, okay, here we go. Gather surface deployed mystery goo observation science from the surface of the mun. I will accept that mission. I'm going to Bring Greenstone back with me from Minmus, sure. To a complex scan with a rover arm on a Munstone. Uh, I will try to do that. And I have to do that with a medium arm.
Goo from... Okay, goo from the surface of Minmus. Sure, I will get that one too. Plant flag on Minmus. Sure. I'm trying to get a mission that I can do... Okay, maybe it's not going to offer me one. I don't want to waste all my uh, reputation trying to find one. All right, so let's now start to build out a mission for all of the stuff I have. I have a lot of money too, as you can see. So I could upgrade my VAB... Or upgrade my R&D. I'm going to upgrade my R&D. Research limit unlimited. Awesome. Alright. So the, the first mission I'm going to do is to go to the MUN. And deploy that goo container that I wanted to deploy. But I also have a lot of other MUN missions. So I'm going to couple them all together and try to do them all together. That means that right now I'm going to have considerably complicated uh, a rocket building. So if you want to skip that, I'm going to provide a time tag in the description of the video right now so that you can skip rocket building. All right, and for all the didn't skip it, here's what I'm going to do. Here's all my, my MUN missions. Plant a flag, I will do. Science from around the space of MUN, I will do. Surface of the MUN, I will do. Orbital station, uh, orbital station excuse me, around the MUN, I will do. Goo container, I will do. Rescue the dude, I will do. And... I'm going to attempt to do a complex scan with a rover arm of Munstone. I will do that as well. And uh, yeah, the goo container from the surface of the Mun. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. What I really have to focus on is the orbital station. So first things first, I'm going to drop a command pod in here, remove the mono propellant, and... Um, I am going to outfit this with a little bit of science. Uh, so I have to make a space station that includes a docking port and antenna. All right, so the docking port I will add up here. And then I will have a payload service bay. Open that bad boy up. Actually, you know what, maybe I can fit this in here so I don't have such a long vessel okay uh, let's see on the top of this I will have a nose cone for aerodynamics uh, I kind of don't like the look of that nose cone I'll have a more flattened one um, in here, I'm going to have my traditional science stuff, so two traditional science goo containers, my barometers, my seismometers, my uh, thermometers. Cool. Close that. Oh, I actually open it back up. I'm also going to add in um, some batteries in there as well. All right, so if I mirror that, I'm going to have to move some of my science gathering objects out of the way so they're interactable. That's fine. There we go. Uh, so that's a lot of battery power. Cool. Close that up. Uh, this is going to be what returns back to Mun, or uh, Kerbin, excuse me. So I'm going to add a heat shield on the bottom. And then, of course, I'm going to need... a. Uh, Parachutes. I really hope that four will do to get me back to Kerbin safe and sound, and maybe two drogue shoots, and we'll stage them separately. Drogues first. Okay, so that is what gets me back to my beautiful home. Uh, then I'm going to want uh, the ability to land on the Mun. So I'm going to put some staging here. Oh, you know, actually, first, I want to be able to control this well. So let's go and add in inline reaction wheels. And I also want to generate some power. So I'm going to do a foldable, foldable ticks. I'll do four-timed 
extenders. And I'm going to extend them now so that I can not um, bump into them when uh, doing my asparagus staged landing stage. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to grab some fuel here. Some good old fuel tanks. Uh, let's see, none of these adapters are for small tanks like this, are they? And this is a liquid fuel, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, these adapters are too big. Okay, so at the top of this will be nose cones. And then at the bottom of this will be my terrier engines. I like terrier engines because they're really fuel efficient. Uh, the next fuel efficient ones would be the poodles, but poodles are a little bit too big. All right, so let's go... Asparagus this around. As you can see, this looks really weird, but it is indeed symmetrical. Uh, what I'll do is asparagus it even more symmetrically. Wow, this is really not cooperating. All right, so eight times terriers, as you can see. And I'll asparagus that off as best as I can. I'm a little worried about collisions, so what I'm going to do is a flight test to see if this does collide. All right, so I'm going to re retract my solar power panels and set them up on an action group. So my solar power panels here will be action group nine. Save that. And as for asparagus staging, I don't really care which one stage in what order. I really don't. Or not exactly. I probably want the front ones to block the door to asparagus first. So let's set them up to do just that. So that would be two. Drag that down. And drag that down. Okay. And now I'm going to do a quick simulated flight test. Um, it's kind of going to be hard to flight test this because it's not really moving. No, it's not really going to work until this thing is moving. On second thought. So this flight test is not really worth it. So apologies for all the load times. Because obviously... Uh, Nothing's going to happen here. Okay. Yep. My thrust to weight ratio wasn't high enough for that to actually be an honest test. That's all right. Uh, let's go ahead and strut all that up anyway. So four times mirror attach. This is a little ugly, but... Uh, Necessary to keep it nice and stable. Oh, that should be four times matched as well. There we go. Uh, that's going to be a lot of Delta V. And then, of course, uh, I will need landing gear. Uh, so let's go do some landing gear. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get. And I haven't asparagus staged any of this, so let's go do that next. And then I'll strut it all up. So this fuels this. Uh, this fuels this. This fuels this. Okay. Good, good. All right, next up, the struts down here to make sure that uh, things don't wobble and separate and cause a big explosive mess. And this is all simple. I don't need to order this in a proper order. Just glue it all together. 
And these uh, struts uh, magically separate on their own when they stage. All right, there we go. And then if I check my Delta V, this will be for MUN. So this is about 4.5K Delta V on the MUN. Good. Now we just have to add in stuff to get this to the MUN. All right, so what I'm going to do, I do have my um, docking port. I do need to add power, I have power generation. I do need an antenna. Uh, but I'm going to add an antenna below. So what I'm going to do here is to add in a, even a larger than that, a large decoupler. And uh, hitchhike utility. Because I'm building a space station that needs to house a certain amount of people. And let's go with a large inline wheel and then another hitchhike container and on this stage I will also add in um, let's see these giant relay antennas I'll add one to the bottom Okay, and what else do we need? Uh, orbital station, so this vessel supports 11. It generates power, has a docking port, has an antenna. I need to add a lot of fuel and put it into orbit. Okay, so now it's just the fuel bit. Uh, what I'm gonna do for this sensitive um, antenna is give it a little bit of a canopy uh, nope close fairing uh, let's put that upside down I know it's a little weird to have this on the bottom but all right build fairing Okay, so that is nicely contained. Cool. Uh, now for the fuel. So what I'm going to want is really a lot of fuel to get this up into a MUN, stable MUN, controllable orbit, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's go ahead and add some liquid fuel for the circularization and all that jazz. So we'll put that... Uh, We're going to have that be asparagus staged as well. And let's grab the biggest jumbo tanks we have. There we go. Make sure that they don't connect, which they don't. Cool, because we don't want that bumping into one another. It's not going to be all that aerodynamic. Um, I'm trying to think if that could be helped or not. I don't think it really can. Um, just from the lack of space. Uh, you know, maybe. Actually, if we go into... Not aerodynamic, but a couple... No, where is it? Structural. Now, these adapters are... Uh, I don't know. That That probably won't really help with aerodynamics. Uh, but I can leave it. Uh, no, I'm going to take it off. I don't think it's going to really help. Okay, that's a lot of fuel there. And these are going to be uh, mainsail engines. I want powerful engines. A lot of bang for my buck. Uh, these fairings, that fairing right there, I'm going to put on a different stage. Because I don't want it blasting off when I'm not ready for it to. And then we will mirror this six times. Like that. Perfect. Let's raise this up a little bit. Save it. Now I want to asparagus this off as well. Get the most bang for my buck out of the uh, fuel here. All right. 
And before I actually set up the asparagus stuff, I want to make sure that it is nicely glued. So... I'm going to make sure that uh, the top half and the bottom half are strutted together so it doesn't wobble uh, uncontrollably. And then we've strutted the tops off to one another. Let's strut the bottoms off. And then I'll set up the, uh, the fuel pumps for the asparagus staging. And then after I have the this all asparagus staged, I will also add in some uh, kickbacks to help with the initial thrust. This is a big honking mission. But as you can see, I have a lot of contracts that I'm doing sort of all at once. Um, so yes, it's a massive, massive, massive ship, but... Um, I'm doing a whole lot of contracts, which should make it profitable. All right, let's fuel these together. That connects to that. And this to this. And that's the last stage to go. Yep, good. Save that. Nice. Um. Okay, uh, our Delta V is pretty good, but alas, I'm still going to add even more because I am ridiculous. I am not anything if I'm not ridiculous. Uh, so let's add some kickbacks. Kickbacks are relatively cheap. And will really help with our thrust to weight. I'm going to make the kickbacks just about the same height as the regular engines. So I don't have a weird center of thrust issues. And I'm going to do... Uh, two kickbacks per, per main sail engine. Making sure that they're all relatively the same height. And then I also want to make sure that the kickbacks are being added to the right stages. So the st uh, separators here... It should be on stage 11 and the kickbacks on stage 12. Uh, I do realize it has changed my delta V, but I don't think for the negative. Uh, all right, so let's add the rest of the kickbacks around the rocket. And then we're going to want the to make sure that they're all the same height. Roughly. Oh my god, this Kerbal. I think uh, the new patch, if I was to have one critique, uh, it's a little laggy. It can be challenging to place parts due to sort of choppiness. Um, other than that, I think it's fantastic. The amount of variety of really cool ships and rovers and things that add in due to all the robotics are phenomenal but uh, there is a little bit of input, la input lag all right let's make sure all the staging is correct so all the kickbacks one two three four five six they're all on the right stage and then there's separators, one, two, three, four, five, six, are all cor correct, perfect. Now to make sure they don't uncontrollably waddle around. It's not where I wanted to put it. Let's hook it up like this. And strut them all up accordingly. Oh, this game is getting choppy. Game's like, ah, it's too complicated. It's really not. Yeah, I think it's just performance from the new patch. 
So I, I built big ships like this already in this series, and I don't think they were this choppy to uh, strut. So I just got to be careful with my clicking. And then before I do an honest launch, I'm going to do a quote unquote simulated launch where I'm just going to simulate all the stages and then revert. The last thing I need on this thing is some control fins. So I'll add them in as well. Let's do the Delta wings, Delta Deluxe. So that's one. Two, and we'll do six of them. Keeping things nice and symmetric. Three, four, and five and six. Uh, then actually, I lied. I also want to put launch stability. And put that on phase or stage 12. Uh, that way, the craft is all at the same height. Launch stability is really, really nice. All right, neat. This looks like a giant explosive tube of fuel, meaning that it's probably all set to go. All right, now for the launch simulation, this will involve all three pilots. Eventually, I'm going to kick one of the pilots out of the command pod so we can go rescue the dude. But for right now on the simulation, I might as well have all three. All right, loading up the launch. Eventually, waiting, thinking, processing. There we go. Not a lot of wobble while it loaded. Uh, a lot of the clamps didn't release, so that's a problem. I thought they were all staging to 12, but clearly there are some that are higher up that I have to fix. So that was a, a fun simulation. One I should have caught in building. Yep, yeah, here are some of the uh, release clamps that got up on the wrong stage. Boy, would that be embarrassing if NASA ever did that try to launch a, uh, a vessel, or anyone really, and having it anchored is basically like setting off a bomb on your launch pad. All right, so that should fix that issue. Now for simulation number two. I just like to simulate the staging um, and all that so that you can make sure that for instance, you have enough parachutes to actually slow the descent of the craft, uh, so on and so forth. It's kind of nice. Uh, and it's also realistic. Uh, when NASA was planning the Apollo mission to land on the moon, they had something like 10 f launches before they actually landed on the moon, maybe like nine, um, testing all sorts of different things before they actually did the landing itself. All right, so here is this stage. I'm going to cut, release all of my solid fuel, and all that solid fuel released properly, and then test the experience staging. And that worked. Next asparagus stage. That worked. Next asparagus stage. That worked. Next. 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 Drogue shoots. Regular shoots. And I'm less than 9 meters per second. So I know that all works. Alright, so back to vehicle assembly. Our simulation, quote unquote, worked perfectly. Everything asparagus correctly. Everything launched correctly. Nothing collided. Nothing exploded. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is let's kick out. Um, oh, actually, I need to add one more thing to this ship here. Service bay. Um, all right, go into the buildings. I totally forgot about my mission. So let's fix that. This is going to be a little challenging to do because I have built out the rest of everything. Uh, so I'm going to add in these little storage containers here. I'm kind of, it's a little cheesy because they're, oh, there we go. That's a little less cheesy because they were kind of clipping in. And in here, I will add the communicatron, the goo monitor, and the station control. God, I bet a lot of you were like, oh no, you forgot. No, I didn't, for well, I did forget. But I eventually remembered before it mattered. And then three solar power panels. So the communicatron will help transfer the science experiment back home and then the goo is the experiment and then the experiment control runs it all. Cool. Crisis averted. Wow, my Delta V looks really terrible. Um, but I don't think it is. All right, save and crew. We are gonna kick Bill out. Bye, Bill. And Valentina, you wanna fly this one? All right. Save and launch. So this is the real deal. Um, I might not be able to get the whole mission done uh, this episode, just cause I don't want this episode to run unreasonably long cause I don't have infinite time to do this episode. Sadly, it's just the way it is. But um, at the very least, I can get this ship into Kerbal orbit. Kerbin orbit, not Kerbal. Kerbal orbit would be solar orbit, and that's not what this mission's all about. All right, loading up. So now I have a spare seat in my return pod for the rescuee. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And launch. Oh, no, that is, for some reason, I've lost controls. I'm going to revert to launch. Let's count that as another simulation. I think I uh, was controlling it from, like, a camera spot or something. It was kind of weird. Let's pretend that never happened. I couldn't even zoom out. There we go. This is normal. All right, throttle up, sass on, launch. Now it's a big, big complicated rocket, so right now I am not really getting any frames from this thing. There we go. So now I'm going to cut back my liquid fuel so that I'm mostly just using the solid. The solid alone doesn't produce enough thrust to brake, uh, to accelerate. Let all my solid fuel burn itself out and then be liquid again. So I have a whole lot of experiments to run. So I want to get oh you know what? I don't have a rover arm either but I don't think this mission would be good for a rover arm because I really wouldn't be able to manage to put a rover down on the mun anyway so although I did overlook that one uh, mission I don't think it would be achievable without considerable more effort all right so now we've ditched the solid fuel Gonna start to burn the liquid. And I gotta, I'm gonna 
try to be as fuel efficient as it can here. Um, because we don't want to burn up all our fuel because we do need about 4k fuel uh, in orbit of the Mun to achieve the space station assignment. Contract, whatever it is. So, this thing is pretty controllable, fortunately. Uh, and... I am about to lose... Oh, I should have pointed a little bit better. Let's call that one last simulation. What kind of time do I have? Uh, I have enough time to maybe get to orbit. So hopefully I won't continue to screw this up and I'll actually get to orbit this episode. Uh, the problem with that is I wasn't facing exactly prograde and uh, separating from an angle caused the, the separated engines to drop and cause damage to the ship. That's what happened there. And I kind of knew it and I didn't do anything about it. And that's entirely my fault. Okay. So we'll run this stage. Run all the, the beautiful solid fuel out. Now, for me to do my next milestone mission, which would be explore Minmus, it'd be ideal if I had a rescue mission of someone stranded around around the orbit of Minmus, so I could do the crew transfer uh, way more efficiently by rescuing whomever I need to rescue. So that's my plan there. All right, I'll be more careful about staging this time. Got that stage done. Now to burn angled 90 a little bit and mostly, uh, mostly just enough burn for good thrust here. I'm having to do some micro adjustments here. The ship wants to turn often. There we go. Now I'm actually angled prograde. So if I stage like this, I'll even tell the pilot to angle at prograde. I won't have any collision issues. Beautiful. Much, much, much better than last time. Uh, my delta V here, thrust to weight. I want a thrust to weight just above one. So I'll keep this tab open just so I can peek at it. I'm going to thrust up a little bit more, because I also want to bring my apoapsis to uh, 70k. These aren't strutted to one another, so there's a little bit of inherent wobbling here. Maybe a design flaw. going to force it to burn a little bit up so that my app climbs keeping a close eye on my liquid fuel because I need 4,000 liquid fuel to accomplish this mission and it'd be a real shame if I didn't get the space station mission done because that's the bulk of this alright Apo is about 60k, so I'm almost there. Sixty-five K. And I'll bring it up to eighty. Just so that I'm not skimming, you know? Alright, seventy-eight's enough. Good. Uh next up a maneuver to circularize. Hmm. 
All right, 90. There, that's sort of circle. It's not perfectly circularized. That's a, I'm gonna need to almost immediately stage. So what I'm gonna do is just burn off the rest of this stage and separate it now. Perfect. Give it a little bit of thrust so I get away from it. I don't want to be sitting on top of it. All right, I am in space. So my uh, fuel efficiency for my engines are even better. Uh, node in, okay, let's start burning. The circularization. I really should have strutted these together, oh well. So I can do full burn here because I am out of the Atmo and my engines are a little bit more efficient at this point. And I have about 12,000 liquid fuel, so if I can burn less than 8 of it, uh, that'd be ideal. Because then I would have, uh, achieve my mission. Uh, one thing I realized is my satellite thing, I don't really have any power generation for that stage, so I'm putting a, I'm probably going to abandon that. I'm putting a just basically debris in orbit of the, uh, of the moon, but oh well. Could be worse. All right. I got orbit around Kerbin. And I'm going to have to continue the second part of this mission uh, next episode because I am just about out of time. So uh, I hope I have covered all of the new components of Breaking Grounds enough that you can have fun with it. Uh, just a quick synopsis. You've got deployable objects. You'll need a Kerbal to deploy them. You need power and then you need the experiment control and you can put those anywhere and fulfill missions doing them. They're really cool. And then you have the scanning arm. Essentially, you have the deployable science and scanning arm. And then the robotic components that allow you to make really cool rovers and rotating space stations and spider bots and whatever else you want to do. If you have any feedback for me, drop me a line. And I do hope that you tune in next time. Thank you all for watching. And I'll catch you all later. Adios.